Yeah, I'll sit down. Hi everyone, how are you going? Don't mind me, Jeez, it's hot. <laughs> um, okay, dokie, we're just getting organised here. We get the camera in the right place, and I've so I'm up here in Bundaberg with Karen, who's on the cashless debit card, and we're going to talk about her life on the card. Um, I'll just give it a few minutes. We'll um, start seeing people come in at the top. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to lead this in with. Um, Karen will be talking about life on the cash, just debit card in general, how it's impacted her housing, mm -hmm. her health, her children, um, her business, ex you know, the whole kit and caboodle. So, um, and we'll also be talking about other things we'll show her off her business and, and she's making our lovely mugs for us. So if you want one, you can order here. Okay, just send me a message or put it in the comments and we'll work <laughs> it out. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hand over to Karen and she can uh, talk to you about what life was like on the card and, or is on the card. And, yeah. Oh, because we've still got your stuff on it. It's nearly yeah, three years. Haven't got off it yet. Um, can you guys see all right? Because my face looks really dark. It's very... Hold on. Hang on. We're just going to tweak this a little bit. Okay. We're going to add some light to the... <laughs> We didn't think we'd need lighting. No, but, but it's very dark. It's very dark in here. So, yeah, to us in here, it's like broad daylight. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> uh, which one? No, that one. I'll just grab another one. We're just trying to make it so you can see us properly. <laughs> it's rather warm up here too. It's disgusting. The heat is absolutely horrible. All right, let's see. Is that better? Does that even make a difference? I don't know. So can everybody hear us Maybe okay? That's the main thing. Yeah, there we go. Anyway. Say hello, baby. <laughs> this is my second youngest, Misty. Anyway. Um, okay, baby, it's too hot. So yeah, life on the card. It has not been fun at all. Um, as those of you who know me or know my story, um, we'll know. <laughs> I have five children. I'm a single parent. I live in Bundaberg. Uh, I've been on the cashless debit card for two, three years. Closer to three, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I was put on the card when I separated from my girl's dad, um, leaving a domestic violence relationship. Um, get out of that, please. So there was no warning. It just showed up in the mail. I didn't get a letter saying you've been placed onto this program. I was actually told by a member of Centrelink that I wouldn't be placed onto the program. Well, Mommy look how that turned out. Okay, hey, look, we're going live. Mummy's talking to people, so you need to be quiet, please. But why are they pictures? Oh, you can have them here. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> the joys of being a parent. Always hungry. There you go. Right, do you want to go into with David on the air in the aircon? Yeah. Okay. Put the rubbish in the bin first. Yes, put the rubbish in the bin first. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> so yeah. Um, to start off with, it was an absolute pain in the backside because I had um, debts with uh, Zip Money and Zip Pay, um, Money 3, Surgy at the time. Uh, so I had to, and I was paying that off fine by myself um, before the card. And then when I got put on the card, I had to change everything over. And there was payments that weren't going through when they were supposed to. They were trying to take money out when they weren't supposed to. Um, so for probably the first six months, it was just an absolute nightmare. Um, and also, as those who know me will know, I am uh, not backwards in coming forwards and I can get quite assertive and frustrated. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was a major stress on my mental health. I was constantly cranky and I was like shaking my fist at the world. What the hell have I done to deserve this crap? Um, and then when my partner and I, um, when he actually got his own place, because uh, we'd separated before he left, uh, it just got worse from there. You know, I ended up with a whole heap of his debt because um, his phone was in my name. I bought a, a mowing equipment for his business that was in my name. Uh, I found out that he hadn't paid about $900 worth of his share of rent. So that was, yeah. But... Off my own bat, I went and Hello. sought. Sorry. 
Yeah, okay, baby, you really need to go watch cartoons or go in with the aircon, please. They're up the roof. Okay, the spiders are on the roof. They're not going to get you. <laughs> They're not wiggling. They're not wiggling, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I went and found a financial counsellor, which was something I didn't even know existed until I went looking. Um, and he helped me organise payment moratoriums and reduce payments for all of my debts. And it took me about a year and a half, I think, and all of those debts were gone. You know, so like it wasn't like there was any support offered to me because I was placed onto the Indu card. It's all the support I received, I had to go looking for myself. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't even think to do that sort of thing. You know, like I didn't know they existed. Why would anyone else sort of thing? Um, oh, that's a good breeze. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so I did all that by myself. I've had the card decline trying to buy jeans. Um, uh, that, that was on the first 7.30 report I did, and the comments in the social thread were just ridiculous. What are you doing shopping at Just Jeans? Yeah, and I'm why, like, yeah, why are you buying for, jeans? Yeah, yeah, two for one deal, and they were $40 a pair. So I got two pairs of jeans for 40 bucks. That's cheaper probably than Kmart. <laughs> like, but anyway, you know, so um, the online bullying and harassment I copped, um, after doing the 7.30 report was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the Sydney Morning Herald was slightly better. Um, but yeah, you know, like I even had one guy uh, take a photo that the 7.30 report took of me and my kids and made it into a meme and mm. passed it all around town. Like it was, it was atrocious. Um, I'm trying not to go back to how that actually felt because then I'll start crying. Um, but yeah, it was, it was horrible. You know, um, then there was the incident at the um, Elliot Heads Community Fair, I think it was. I think it was Elliot Heads. One of the heads around here anyway. Um, you know, my daughter was performing. Uh, we were told it was a free event. I didn't even make it to the gate. And I see this big sign, $2 for adults, dollar per child. So, like, I flipped. I lost it. I'm like, I'm like, I don't have any cash. I had $80 on my Indu card, but I couldn't access it. So, you know, like, I'm... Um, I wanted to, my instant instinct was to run. You know, I'm just like, let's just get the fuck out of here. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. <laughs> we don't do editing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I just wanted to get out of there. But uh, then I had that opposing factor of I wanted to stay because I didn't want to disappoint my daughter because she was performing. So, you know, oh, as always, kids win. <laughs> so I ended up going up to the lady um, that was at the gate and explained the situation. She was really good about it. Um, and she's like, look, honey, don't worry about it. We'll just let you in. I thought that was going to be the worst of it, but it wasn't. Uh, so I'm notoriously early for everything. I hate being late. I show up for everything 20 minutes early or more. That day I showed up an hour early. Yeah. So I, my oldest daughter was at a birthday party. So I was one kid down at least. But, um, and at that stage I only had the four, but my younger three, they were looking around and they're seeing kids, you know, on rock wall climbs and dodging cars and jumping castles, base painting, camel rides, you name it, it was there. Um, and they're constantly at me, mummy, can we do this? Can we do that? You know, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? And I'm like, honey, I've got no cash. You know, like it's, it's, um, and everything was cash on it. They had ATMs there. But you can't, can't withdraw, withdraw cash. cash with the Indu card. So it was like, we, we did a quick lap around and as soon as I realised everything is on, you know, card only, um, no, sorry, cash only, um, yeah, it was not good. Uh, so we went and sat down underneath the marquee and we're sitting there and I'm trying to, you know, like muck around with the kids and keep them occupied. Yeah, it didn't work. So, you know, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? It's not fair, mummy. I just want to do this, mummy. Mm. So I'm getting, I was already flustered. So I'm getting more and more upset and I'm getting more short with the kids because I'm like, I've told you, we just can't do it, okay? It's not my fault. You know, this is crap. This is all because of that stupid goddamn card. Yeah. Um, and then it got to the point where I lost it. I've, I've started, I'm almost crying you again rang me. You rang me in pieces. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. I completely broke down and I went to the edge of the paddock in the darkest corner I could find and just bawled my eyes out. Um, and the only reason the kids and I got to do anything that day is because my best friend, her mum showed up because 
um because we were supposed to go together but she was having problems with her kids so i just met her there um yeah so her mum came and found me like walking around the whole place looking for me because i was hiding um and slipped me 20 bucks so you know at least the kids could get something to eat and um I, no they didn't even get their face painted that's right because by the time she got there the girls were just about to perform so they got on stage they did the performance and we hightailed it out of there you know which was really shit because it was an awesome setup they had fireworks later that night you know it could have been a really fun family activity which we don't really get to do a lot of um and we missed out or because of the stupid cashless debit card because you're excluded the two lights reflecting yeah. in my glasses are distracting it, which ones i think it's this one yeah um it's it's yeah yeah, yeah it's, that's all right. it's it's not just here um we've got reports from all over the country in the other card regions where kids are excluded people um local markets in regional areas that are cash only so people are missing out on being yeah. able to buy fresh bread fresh fruit and vegetables because the weekly market is cash only every event is cash only and then um like i had one parent remind school teachers um well count us out because mm. like one teacher was expecting his parent to turn up and she said well there's no um she said i suppose i could go to the local servo and offer to swap you know cash for fuel yeah like other people do and this teacher's looking at her she goes well that's what we have to do to get cash in an Indu card, otherwise yeah. my children stay home. Yeah. Then just absolutely excluded from so many things, sporting events, community well, that's the events. Thing. Like, I, did, I, I normally play field hockey and so do the kids, but we didn't play this year. Um, combination of money problems and just, you know, new baby trying to start a business and everything, it just wasn't viable. But I want to play, oh, sorry. sorry, but I want to play again next year. Yeah. So the canteen at uh, Bundaberg Hockey Association. And? Um, they have, uh, it's mostly cash. They do have an FPOS option, but it is a PayPal FPOS oh, machine. Oh, so you can't use it. So I can't use it. So, so that's yeah. going to exclude you from being able to, to support the hockey club. Yep. And it's and your kids probably too. going to prevent a lot of things. Because normally when, when we play hockey, it's, we were there the whole day. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Phone call. <laughs> I will just mute that i don't know that number anyway um yeah so we'd spend the whole day down there you know yeah. um the kids would have their games in the morning you know we'd stay down there we'd have lunch they'd get you know a bottle of water for their game they'd get a packet of lollies after their game and all that sort of thing um but we can't do any of that now so you know like no. if if we're going to spend the whole day down there i have to bring crap from home um, and not be able to support your local club. Yeah, not be able to support my local club, which is pretty Because crappy. PayPal's banned and, yep. and, that's and it's cash only yep. and that's it, you know. And I mean, I think other sporting clubs around the country have got the same problem where kids can't even buy a bottle of water. Yeah. And we already ran into that early in the, in the beginning where a, a parent was embarrassed that their child went to um, get a bottle of water in the soccer. Yeah. at the soccer like a, a <coughs> van type thing yeah but they didn't realize that the the um the fpos machine is run from sporties so it was automatically banned for a bottle of water yeah and yeah. it was just ridiculous you know so <coughs> it impacts on your children's abilities um so regarding of society really yeah yeah. community events sporting events yeah. social events mother's day father's day stalls at school anything that is socially um inclusive and yeah. anything that also co promotes community and growing up in the community in a society yep yeah yeah so pretty much the only activities that the kids and i do um outside of the house is we go to the beach we'll go to uh, well when we had the skate park we'd go to the skate park uh, take them to the park every now and then um covid was really horrible because normally they have these holiday activity booklets that come home and it tells you what's got going on around the town and, you know, you'd have five or six activities throughout the holidays that were free mm -hmm. that you could take the kids to and they were awesome. Um, but during COVID, that didn't exist. So those holidays were hard. I bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Five, five of them. Five of them, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and like every now and then, you know, if I've got the money, we'll go to the movies or something like that. But any sort of community events, like 
unless I've got <coughs> plenty of notice and I can juggle around how I pay for things, I'm not going to have the cash because my cash portion goes on my car repayments and my car insurance because Indu won't pay them. So all those people going, oh, but you get 20% cash. <laughs> that's a quarter of a million dollars, you know? I'm just like, uh, uh, yeah, no, okay. no, actually I don't. And even if I did, it would be two-fifths of FA anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Amanda's asking, how are your kids coping mentally, health-wise, and socially at school? Um, so at the start, they didn't really... Um, they didn't really notice all of that much because it was that period of time where they don't have a lot of, you know, um, holidays or activities and that sort of thing going on. So I got a little bit lucky there at the start. But then when they're like, um, can we have tuck shop, mum? And I couldn't, you know, because every now and then I'd get them tuck shop. Uh, no, sorry, baby. You know, I don't have cash. Mm -hmm. you know? um, they stopped getting pocket money which really makes it hard to motivate them to tidy yeah, up after yeah, themselves. Well, you know, I mean, the incentive to do your chores around the house was to get your pocket money yeah. at the end of the week. Yeah. And now there's no pocket money. Why should people... It's like asking people to go to work all week mm. for your wages, get paid on Saturday, and then turn around and say, sorry, no, I'm not paying you now. Yeah. And then wondering yeah. why they don't want to work next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so so it's knocking the work ethic out of the youth absolutely. before you even get them into that... Um, you know, that, that idea, that so Slave, social conformity, slavery, slavery idea of work and then get paid, yeah. right, mentality is gone because there's no pay at the end of it because yeah. you can't give yeah, the money. there's no reward. There's no reward. But then, um, yeah, so when, when, unfortunately, I mean, as it happens with everyone, when the parents get stressed, it, it affects kids. So the more I got stressed, the more it was impacting on the children. Um, you know, uh, I can't remember if it was Maya or Amber. Maya's 11 now, um, and Amber's nine. So at the time they would have been nine and seven. Mm -hmm. I think it was Amber, the seven year old who came up. She goes, why are we poor mummy? And like, they've never had any inkling of our financial situation up until this card. Um, so it's just like, well, we're, we're not poor baby. I mean, like I know we are. But I don't. I try not to look at it as I'm poor. I look at it as I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. um, but I refuse to label myself with I'm, I'm poor. People should feel sorry for me, or I should feel sorry for myself, or whatever. Um, it's just it's not helpful. So I just don't do it. You're not poor. You're financially disadvantaged, mm. but you're not poor. Yeah. Because you don't have to have money, right? Um, and unfortunately, our system relies on you are only valued on your financial worth, which is a disgusting system to have, right? Um, but no, you're not poor by any means, but people don't understand non-monetary. Yeah. <laughs> and so the girls, you know, all of a sudden, they, they it affected their image of themselves. They started looking at themselves as lesser because mummy can't do this stuff. Mummy can't do this for us. We can't go and do this stuff, you know, all because of this stupid card. So Mark on Twitter is asking... Um, are you able to pay your school fees? Uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to crucify myself here. I don't pay school fees. Okay, so you state government volunteer system? Yep. Yeah, that's yep. fine. That's okay. Um, I, I, I provide all of their equipment and uniforms and all that sort of stuff, um, but I, I've chosen not to pay the school fees purely and simply because it's just another bill that I can't... You know, I've got three kids in school at the moment, um, so if you were to pay school fees there, do they have a centre pay option at that school or would um, you be in a situation where you have to be paying cash? Um, I have heard I'm of another... I'm not entirely sure. I do know they do have um, an a... FPOS terminal in the office because yeah. I've had to pay for uh, sports school sports fees through there. Yeah. And they lodge that differently. Mm. So I went in there to pay for my daughter's uh, inner school sports and she noticed that I was paying with an Inju card. And she goes, oh, did you just pay with an Inju card? And I'm just like, ah, uh, yeah. And she goes, oh, okay, well, we've got to log that differently in our system. I'm just like, what? You've got to log it differently in your system. So they're keeping track of which Inju card holders are spending money at schools. But why are they keeping track of that? You know, like they, they know kids are going to school. I just don't get it. I don't That's understand strange. why it's got to be different. I mean, each card area's got different issues, and people outside card areas that are on the cards are suffering from a um, whole range of different issues, right? Like, so some of the schools up here can do centre pay, 
some of them couldn't. Yeah. Um, some people are using an app, QPay or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, but then you go to other areas, um, like in other regions, and you've got people who can't pay anything mm. on the card. You know, so it's it varies. So um, <coughs> what else is there? Um. Yeah, so uh, is that my car payment, Amanda? Uh, my car payment and my insurance. Why won't Why won't Indu pay those things? Well, again, yeah. that comes down to which financial company that you're with, yeah. um, and we and who's your insurance company. Um, my understanding, Budget Direct is the only one that's approved for direct debit. Yeah, no, I'm with them with SunCorp for my insurance. Um, now I have heard uh, my car's through Money Three. I have heard that they are now allowing that. Um, but with all the problems I had with Inju uh, and uh, Zip in particular, uh, and not paying them on time and all that sort of thing, like that's not something like that I'm willing to risk. I'm not. I'm not going to risk uh, defaulting on my car loan because Inju can't, you know, pull their finger out of their butts and won't. do what they're supposed to do. Um, yeah. And I've already come across a couple of parents that have lost vehicles because. Um, Either the finance company that their loan was through can't accept the cashless debit card, or Indu won't allow a direct debit set up with that finance company. Yeah. Um, they're at loggerheads. Finance companies tend to view the cashless debit card as a, um, a not very legitimate yeah. system, so they don't accept it. So I, I've met people that have lost vehicles as a result. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a struggle. I, I find so many differences across the country, right? Um, depending on your nationality as well, of course. You know, whether you're uh, Aboriginal or whether you're yeah. non-Aboriginal uh, can make a big difference on how you get access to things. So people don't realise the impact started with Indigenous people and single mums now pensioners. The next stage will be cash society. Um, well, the difference with the cash society is everybody who's not on income management will still have the freedom to do whatever they want with their money yeah right they're not blocked at doing basic things like trying to pay rent trying to pay certain bills trying to they're not blocked yeah. in that respect yeah. but yeah a whole totally cashless society is not good because the banks are in control of your money they end up charging whatever fees for you to access your money so you're going to get ripped off that way and at any time they can flip the switch and go bang you know and there goes your money digital like, let's so, get hacked <laughs> um, yeah, everything's digital. There's too much risk mm. of hacking and everything. It's not going to yep. be safe. They won't be able to go fully cashless here for a long time. So, Jane said, are you still noticing any community discrimination against you and your children if people see you using the card? They don't see me using the card because I refuse to use it in public. Um, I had a couple of sly comments made. Um, I think I was in Big W at the time uh, at the checkout uh, when it was just being dodgy. Um, so I'm just like, no, nah, I'm not going to do this. So actually, I, I lie, sorry. The only time I use my card in public is when I do my food shopping at Aldi. I used to um, get Coles online ordered, so I wouldn't have to use my card in public. But you can just get so much more food from Aldi. Um, so I don't have that problem because I avoid it like the plague. Um, the school's pretty good. Um, they haven't really said anything. I mean, the, they've got a lot of like most of the people at my kids school would be on some sort of uh, social security payment um, it's just that catchment area that we're in well with 7,000 families on it here so yeah. there'd be a lot of people that would have it you know what I mean but I mean early in the piece there was a lot of problems Marsha can't hear it um, is everybody able to hear us okay just somebody's saying that they can't hear it very well but um, can you hear me okay are we not sitting too far away from the phone? I'm just trying to make it so that we just both we're just both sitting in the frame and, <laughs> and you're uh, half out. I'm half out. Yeah, well, this is about you, not me. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. Um, it could be Marcia, yeah. Yeah, so yeah everybody else can hear okay. That's fine. Yeah, somebody says it keeps blipping. I don't know what that means. It could be internet connection. I don't know, IT. Um, so, everybody can hear. That's good. All clear. Awesome. That's great. Um, oh, the video keeps going out of sync. Okay, so that's not us. That's Facebook, okay? And there's nothing I can do about it. If I do three-minute videos and nobody messages me, 
it stays in sync. And you got a message right at the start of I, this I one. Got, oh, so that's probably what's knocked yeah. it out. Yeah. So, um, Jack Stevens says, can you tell me what places you're able to use the card? Okay, okay. so uh, physically in store or online? Right, okay. So, okay, um, in store... Um, well, I haven't, I haven't tried to get a meal from a pub or anything like that because I just don't go out. Um, so your main stores, Kmart, Big W, um, haven't tried it at Target yet. Uh, it works at Spotlight. Um, my local service station, every time except for one time. Um, any, any, any retail store that I've walked into, I'm, other than it being an Indu stuff up for whatever reason i haven't had a problem with it working um when it comes to online that's a lot trickier um it depends on you know if it's something like uh wish or maybe even alibaba or something like that they would sell banned products so i would be assuming that it wouldn't work there kogan doesn't work that's banned kogan doesn't work no that's oh. a bad kogan's banned yeah that sucks um, <clears throat> so the main places I've had trouble with it um, is on your, your websites that tend to sell a lot of different stuff um, because sometimes it, they might sell one thing that's on the restricted items list or something like that and you just can't do it. Um, it makes it hard for my business because uh, I would like to get a lot of my stuff from eBay uh, but eBay's a banned merchant. So what I have to do to be able to buy from eBay is I have to purchase from eBay through Afterpay. So it's pushing me into a third party service um, to be able to uh, run my business basically. Um, so like I get all my packaging supplies, some of my cups um, and uh, sticker paper and stuff like that. I get, I get from eBay but I have to do Afterpay to be able to do that. Um, I tried to be able to purchase my stock wholesale uh, through a company that's actually run over in China, <laughs> but can't do it. Um, so I'm having to buy, um, so, so here's an example. You can get a coffee cup from Australia that costs you $6 per cup. Or you can get a coffee cup, the exact same coffee cup, mind you, imported, and it'll cost you $2.50. So it's actually costing me more to get my, to run my business than what it would if I was able to make those purchases and have the products imported using my India card. So, yeah, talking to other people that have tried to set up small businesses themselves or continue them early in the piece, they've ended up they had to quit because without being able to have access to the cash flow, they won't be able, they weren't able to access their wholesalers that they would use on eBay from overseas because yep. they had set sellers that they would deal with for their product. Yep. Um, and that made it impossible to deal with. And yeah, and the only answer was, oh, we'll use Afterpay, which means you're setting up a third party credit line, yep. right? And you're paying interest on that as well to buy your stock. Robbing Peter to pay for it. Yeah, really. And um, like with the particular other person I was talking to, she was a registered Afterpay merchant. Yep. And she'd also become an Indu merchant to try and boost her, you know, so that people could, on the card, could yeah, buy her stuff, yeah. right? But when it came to accessing cash to pay for her supplies, Indu turned around and said, oh, use your afterpay to buy your stock. She said, no, I'm an afterpay merchant. That's a breach of my terms and conditions. That would get me banned from being an afterpay merchant. I can't do that. And even if I did, it was going to cost her 6% on top. Yeah. Um, so everything to do with them is pushing people into debt because the only way you've been able to go around things is to go into debt yeah whereas yeah. if you'd had access to your um, end of your family tax supplement payments oh that's and painful. stuff like that you that's know what I mean painful. yeah because my, my entire um, uh, your tax reconciliation payment and your child yeah. supplement at the that end of the all year went, that all got sunk into my business like every cent every spare cent I get is getting sunk into my business but, um, but not being able to access that money yeah. Yeah. Right, freely. Um, that I've, I've watched three other small businesses collapse yeah. because they just couldn't access it. Um, and even like one of my admins has now um, gone bankrupt because she couldn't access it to buy a second-hand car like she normally would, or and ended up 
on the money three yeah. line because it's like go through more. money three it's 24.95 percent but the minimum is like you buy a car for eight thousand dollars and you pay back sixteen thousand yeah Right, by I being, think I'm paying back 18000 yeah. on mine and mine's an $8,000 car. It's ridiculous, right? Yeah. But it's pushing people, the most disadvantaged people, into poverty even more and, and making sure they're ripped off by third-party finances. Yeah. So um, this is a big thing that I've tried to get through. I've spoken at, at the Senate and stuff like that, is the fact that this system is supposed to be a financial literacy tool. And all I can see is it pushes people into debt. They they push people towards companies that are loan sharks. Basically, yep. oh, I'm not saying afterpay is afterpay. I've seen people do wonders with it, no, but it's amazing. Um, at the same time, it's it's listed as negative credit. It's bad credit system. But you've managed to turn it into a bad credit into a good credit in my because I'm looking around at what you've done. Yeah. Right. Yes, you're in debt, but you'll get out of debt because you're going to build this business. But you're doing it with your one hand tied behind your back. Yeah. Which yep. is your finances are hobbled yep. right by Indu and and social security um and and then you hear the the conservatives oh start a business it's like <laughs> yeah while you've got me hog tied it's yeah. like how yeah. the only reason you know? i'm still going is because i'm a stubborn ass bitch and i refuse to give up good on yeah yeah <laughs> I, I'm, I, I yeah i think that's yeah i'm the same i don't <laughs> yeah. give up one thing so yeah. um so somebody here jack Stephen says Will the opposition abolish the card if they gain power? Yes. And I don't say that lightly. After six years of um, talking to lots of politicians um, and talking to Greens and Labor and other politicians along the way, um, you know, they've already announced that they will scrap the card as, you know, as long as they can get into power. We need to change a government for them to do that, you know. Um, Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with it, and it's going to expand. <laughs> hashtag stubborn ass bitches rule. Yes, you we do. Yep. Yeah. You can put that on another cup too. I, I will. Hashtag stubborn ass bitch. <laughs> That's right. a new one, actually. So yeah, Jack, um, ALP will scrap the card if they if they gain power. That is one of their biggest things. Um, not only will that help nearly sixteen thousand people get off the card, it'll also stop it being expanded so they can't put any more aged pensioners or people on disabilities they can't spread it any further and they will if if the LNP get in right um you're going to find they're going to go straight for our under 36 is first they could be a million and a half people bang within the first year getting shoved on the cash this debit card system and then they'll follow through with the older people a, a bit later uh aged pensioners um are not in the woods you know they're not out of the woods it, there is every intention you know what I mean so, um, any items you cannot buy on the cards? Oh, well, other than your obvious um, uh, alcohol, gambling products, um, here's the thing you can't use your card to buy those things, but you can still buy those things. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, an addict is always going to find a way to get its next fix. You know, gambler is always going to find a way to gamble. Having a piece of plastic that restricts so much more than those three things is never going to change that. Um, you know, if anything, I think the drug problem around town has gotten worse. Um, I was at a friend's house the other day and I walked out to my car that was parked in her driveway and I found a used needle in her driveway. She doesn't do drugs. Um, <clears throat> the neighbours either side of her don't do drugs, but yet we're finding used needles everywhere. I had three used needles dropped in the gutter out the front of my old house on... Um, the other side of town. Yeah. I almost said my address. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> um, you know, and it's just like, it's, it's gotten ridiculous. The homelessness is absolutely skyrocketed. You go down the main street of Bundaberg um, any day of the week, and it's like every second to third shop front has got someone sleeping there doing it rough. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, and, and Bundy people aren't exactly known for being the friendliest of people. So, you know, if I see them down there and they look like they're having a hard day, I'm trying to quit smoking anyway. But if I've got a packet of smokes on me and I see them, I'm just like, do you want to smoke? And they always look at me funny, though, because it's like, uh, are you trying to bludger smoke off me? And I'm like, no, no, I'm trying to give trying you to one. Give one. <laughs> like, I was always brought up, never begrudge a person a cigarette. If you've yeah. got cigarettes and someone, uh, you know, never, um, you know, just don't do it. Just, yeah. I see people um, 
who, oh, why would you give them a cigarette? Because it doesn't hurt and the stress relief for them is as good as Yeah, it is, exactly. And you know? sometimes even so judge people. as little as that can make their day. Um, but yeah, it, it's just gone ridiculous. But I know so many families, uh, like single mums. Hang on. Um, so Angie DV, um, only Labor will scrap the card and um, uh, the party that you're trying to promote on our page, we don't promote. Sorry, they're right wing and they will continue to push for the LNP to be put in back in power. So, um, yeah, um, we don't do, I can't do it from here, but Angie DV, we cannot promote Gap Party on this page. Sorry. Um, ALP will scrap the card, Greens, and Australian progressives will back up um, their anti-card, um, anti-poverty, and their climate action group. So, well, we don't promote any of the right wing on here. Sorry, Angie D. But anyway, um, Angie D asks, can you purchase second-hand goods? Well, that's a nightmare depends. in itself. Depends. Yeah, it depends. Um, um, most of the... Um I call them junk shops because they're not uh, the second-hand stores in town. <laughs> um, they will have uh, FPOS that you can use your card at, but if you're like wanting to purchase uh, second-hand car parts, second-hand furniture, any of that sort of thing from Facebook, Brass Lot Sell, uh, Gumtree, or any of those type of websites, you have to jump through hoops to be able to do it. Um, and I, I tried a couple of times when my kids needed new beds last year. Um, and basically the responses I got were, I don't want to wait for you to get approval from Inju, so we're going to go to the next person. Mm. So I just stopped trying. Yeah. Um, and my mum ended up having to make my kids beds because I couldn't get them beds. And I wasn't going to pay, you know, three, four hundred dollars each for four beds. You know, who has that kind of money? Um, but yeah, so second hand's tricky. Um, second hand requires that you've got to put in an application. You've got to put in like a, either affidavit um, of the seller, you know what I mean? Also, you have you could be in a situation where they do this, they ask for the seller's bank details, mm. which straight away, that puts a lot of sellers off. No, I can't be bothered. No, please. Yeah. No. And like, for instance, I've seen it on the Seduna buy, sell, swap site. The pe people will put something up and put no Indu, mm. right, on yeah, the bottom so of their for sale listings, right? Um, <laughs> So people will put that on their for sale listings, no yeah. Indu card holders, sorry, no, cash there. only, right, because that? people don't want yeah. to be giving their personal details to Centrelink and their bank account details and waiting up to four days yeah. for the approval. Uh, it's just not fair. And um, so people don't do it. So people miss out. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'd, I'd believe that okay. absolutely I'd believe so that so for you your situation homeless right okay. <laughs> because believe it or not this video is brought to you today <laughs> from my mother's garage yes <laughs> yes and this is my studio uh, this is where I work from um, this is where I make all my tumblers my cups key rings or everything that I do I do in this room um, so my situation was two years ago I was living in a house over the other side of town I had been there for seven years um, my no, landlord Baby, you, yes, you've got a moustache. Shush. <laughs> um, so my landlord, um, he was really good. He never raised the rent the whole time I was there, which was like, unheard of. Uh, but it got to the point where he wanted to sell. And this is just before COVID hit. So he, he was really good about it. He gave me 11 months notice, which was way more than what he needed to do. Um, in this, at the start, I was applying for, you know, like 20, 30 houses a week because there was plenty of them around. Um, then COVID hit and they just sort of slowly trickled off to nothing. And these days, nothing's in my price range. Um, you know, I was paying $350 for a six bedroom house in the center of town, accessible to everything. And now you won't find a two bedroom unit for six hundred uh, for $300 a week. It's, it's just gone crazy. Um, the wait list for housing is ridiculous. I've been on it since the start. Um, so what ended up happening was the 11 months came around. I still hadn't found a house. I had nowhere else to go. So I had to move my six bedroom house, seven years worth of junk <laughs> and furniture. You know how it all gathers up. Um, quietly, buddy. Um, so I had to try and move all of that into an already overcrowded three bedroom house that at the time had my mum, my mum's husband, my sister and my sister's partner already living here. Um, so I had to get rid of pretty much all of my furniture. Um, 
I think I kept my TV cabinet, my bed, and my chest of drawers, um, and the kids, the kids' toy boxes. But that was it. Um, there's no built-in wardrobes or anything. Um, well, there is, but they're full of mum's stuff. Um, so it was yes, baby. Got Christmas lights. What? Yes, they're Christmas lights. Okay. Can you please go go check mail? I'm sure I heard the mailman. Go check. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's definitely uh, become a barrier to housing. Uh, at the start, when I was applying, I applied for over, oh God, I can't even remember last count. I think it was over 300 houses. And that was in the first 12 months, and I stopped counting after that. Um, a lot of the places would see, because you have to give over your, your bank details and all that kind of crap, and they'd see Inju, and they'd be like, no, Not thank you. We know the problem that... Um, Landlords have been having with Indu paying rents on time. And then there was the 30% rule. So if a house, a weekly rent, a weekly rental price of a house is more than 30% of your income, they won't give you a house. I think 30% of what I get is $285. And I, I need a three bedroom minimum with a lock up garage, preferably a four bedroom with a lock up garage so I still have somewhere to work. Um, yeah. So it's it's just not not happening. Um, so Indu is a barrier to you getting housing. Yep. So you're sort of stuck here at the moment. Oh, yeah. So you're in a situation where you're in like the, all the kids are in one room and you're in another room. Yep. Um, and you're in your mum's garage yeah. as your workshop, trying to get yourself a future. Yes. Um, which is really difficult. Um, Absolutely. On, on top of a housing crisis, on top of. Um, yeah. You're, you know, being hogtied by the bloody car. Yeah. Because that's all I can see it as. It's like, here, we want you to pull yourself up by the bootstraps, but we've taken away the bootstraps and the boots, mm. and now we've tied your hands behind your back. Yeah. Right? And now we're telling you to jump through hoops and uh, miraculously make a success of your life. And it's like, yeah, yeah, without anything to help. Do you know what I mean? So it's just disgusting. So, and, and there's no there's no supports or anything like that. Like when my mental health plummeted, like I said earlier, every every single piece of support I've gotten, I've had to go hunt for. Like there's no you know oh if you're having problems, here's this service, that service, we can link you in. No, they don't give a shit. They dump you on the card and they say deal with it. Yeah, and, you know, that's just it. Deal with it. Or if it, when something goes wrong with the card, oh, it must be your fault yep. or it must be the merchant's yep. fault. But for heaven forbid, it can't be Indu's fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when you do call them up, they, they talk down to you. They talk to you like you're an idiot. They're condescending. Yeah, very condescending. Um, and they gaslight you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so they, they use, they're narcissistic in their speech. They gaslight people, upset people. They're, they're condescending. Um, I've, you know, I've heard from other people how they've spoken down to people. Yeah. I've yeah. also listened in on a few conversations as well. My phone automatically records all of my phone calls. I, I installed this app after my ex and I broke up. Well because done. Because he was so calling me and abusing the <laughs> shit out. I've got them. Yeah. I, I'd have to like scroll through a yeah. million of things to find yeah. them, but they're there. You know, <laughs> um, you know, and then even that, like, I've, I've ripped it into one of the workers one day, um, when it came to my then declining my exit. I'm just like, what do you mean? Like, how am I not financially responsible? How do I not know what bloody issues are? I've told you why there's declined transactions and it's through no fault of my own. Um, so yeah, with that, all that debt I told you about earlier that my ex left me in and the payment moratoriums and the reduced payments. So the two companies I had a problem with, which is basically the one company really, was Zip. So one lot would tell me, okay, you've got a six-month payment moratorium, so that's no payments for six months. And then after that, we'll resume the payments at the, the regular rate. So I'm just like, sweet, okay, that's all good. Every time I'd email them, they'd tell me a different story. Oh. And I'm just like, well, what is it? You know, have I got three months, six months, what is it? And they're like, no, no, you've got six months. So three months into that six months, um, I can't remember exactly how it came about. Oh, that's right. I woke up one morning and I opened my Indu account and it's empty. I think there was like $7 left in there or something like that, some small amount anyway. I'm like, what the hell, I just got paid. Where mm -hmm. the hell is all this money gone? And it's transaction after transaction after transaction of Zip taking out all of these repayments for the for 
um, what had been happening was they'd been trying to take payments out of my account on my off pay week for probably um, three months. So I'm like, oh yeah, it's nearing the end of the six months. I should expect payments to start coming out. But they've been trying to do it for three months. So I have yeah. three months worth of them trying to take money out of my account and it not being there. So like defaults. But it doesn't show up on your injury statement and it doesn't show up on the app. So I had no idea until I woke up this morning and my account had been drained. Because apparently the it's a computer system thing. And it will just, once it's realizes that oh yep i've got that money i'll just keep trying to take it out yep. while the money's there yeah which i don't even know how that's legal but anyway yeah the, um, the zero 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 one cent is the tester to see if they mm. can get money out of the account oh no there wasn't even any of that oh you didn't even do that no, but it just a, a lot of the time you'll see a tester of one cent yeah and then then you'll see the transaction take place do you yeah. know what i mean um so yeah but then um so i explained all of that to the lady that did my first phone call for the exit and she's like, oh, yeah, okay, well, that's, you know, that's completely out of your control. That's not a problem. I'm actually going to recommend you get taken off the card because I dug myself out of a mountain of debt that wasn't even mine. Um, she said, oh, I, I do see that you use a lot of um, uh, afterpay here. And I was like, yeah, I have five kids. If I go buy them new clothes, it's going to cost me $1,000 to, to outfit them all. I don't have that sort of bulk cash access. So she's like, yep, that's not a problem. Um <laughs> And this is a funny thing. Oh, I see you don't like Inju, she says. I'm like, oh, whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> Every time I transfer whatever's left in my Inju account to my bank account, I put screw Inju in big capital letters. Get the picture? I don't like Inju. So, but yes, yeah, she recommended that, well, she said she was going to recommend that I be taken off the card. So I was absolutely gutted. Uh, I think it was about two months later when I got the letter saying that they're declining my exit because I'm unaware of my financial responsibilities and I'm financially irresponsible. And it's like, you've got to be kidding me. So I called them up and I'm just like, okay, this is bullshit. Um, how do I appeal this? Oh, well, you need to have evidence to back up what you're saying. I said, okay, then can you send me the statements that show where all these declined transactions are so I can match them up with my email um, communications with Zip and then I can present that as this is, you know, what actually happened. Nope. Nope. No, they won't give it's over that. In due eyes only. Yeah. Apparently, my financial details are their eyes only. And I don't even understand how it's legal for them not to show up on your app or in the bank statements in the first place. It's just... <laughs> and yet, according to Anne Ruston at Senate Estimates, I think it was, or... It might have been um, Catherine Campbell. I'm not sure which one. Amanda would probably know. Um, they were guaranteeing people that, um, when asked about this situation as to why people can't get on their statements a record of their declined transactions, according to the department, um, uh, well, you should be able to Indu issue the statements. Mm. No, they issue statements, but they won't issue you statement showing where the decline transaction was yep. or what it was for we've yep. been through this with so many other cardholders as well yep. it's absolutely ridiculous um, so and it's like yes it's only internal only we're only allowed yeah. to see so that you, so the onus is on you to prove them wrong but they but you've only got half the but evidence. You, you've only got half the evidence because yep. you can't get the information that they claim that they have yeah it's like the big secret for them, yeah. all right? And it's like, but you need that to prove that they're wrong. And they're going, no, that's our secret. And yeah. But how do you know they haven't made it up? Yeah. yeah. And this is it. And <coughs> going by some of the exit opt-out refusals that I've seen, the rejections, some of the crap that I've seen as reasons given for refusing people opt-out. Um, I mean, the funniest one I would have to say would be in, the, in regards to... Um, a family of a same-sex couple right and they rejected his partner on the grounds that his partner wasn't looking after his mother right who didn't even live on the premises and he was failing to provide for his wife mm -hmm. he didn't have a wife had a husband <laughs> and it's like that was the funniest and I, I actually spoke to this this couple um, about that and he thought it was hilarious I didn't I found it offensive mm. on, on behalf of him because they're a same-sex couple, and by with the wording of that, they were not acknowledging that person's marriage mm. or his husband, 
are just using it as an excuse to not let him off the card by saying he's not look he's not providing for his wife. Well, he doesn't have a wife, yeah. and he's not providing for his mum. Well, they don't live with their mum, so why would he be providing for his mum? It was just crap, you know, just excuses. Um, so Amanda says here, India are legally required to provide a full statement within 30 days of request. They've never fulfilled that, that obligation. Right. Right. You can ask them for a statement. They'll send you the statement. Yeah, the thing is, they it. won't send you the statement that says the declines. Yeah. Which is the thing that you need. Exactly. You know, um, yeah, so... Wow, it's hot, isn't it? It's really hot. <laughs> it is really hot in here, like guys. No so, um, what we're going to do is, I'm going to wrap this up. Is there anything else you want to say about the card? Um, oh, my brain. I talk like this, and while I'm in the flow of talking, it comes easily. Yes. But as soon as I stop, I, my brain sort of goes, uh, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> like, what planet am I on today? Um, Put it this way. How much faster would you be able to progress this business if you went on an Indian cash or debit card? <laughs> a shitload. <laughs> All right? I so mean, I was... it's holding you back. It is, yeah. Right? Yeah, and absolutely. I'm going to give you a, you guys a look at what she's doing in a minute. But, um, yeah, you know, is it 50% holding you back, 80% holding you back? Okay, so let's think about this. It's making um, you go really slow. At a yeah, it pace. is. It's also, so how I said all of my um, supplement payments and all that get sunk into my business, it does, but it gets sunk into paying off the debt I've incurred in the previous 12 months yeah. for my business. So, in, so it's like I'm constantly leapfrogging myself. Instead um, of being able to use that cash capital yeah. for freely yourself yeah. to be able to shop for the best buyers, to yeah. be able to get the best bulk deal, buyers, right, bulk, bulk, bulk sales, sales. right, you're forced into the debt trap. And then, so you're using that money to pay off the debt trap. Yep. Um, and so what? the only way you can run your business is to pay off the debt and then transfer again, run up the debt trap and transfer again. Because you, So you're running on debt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, whereas in the past you would have been running on credit because you, you would have been running on your yep. own cash flow. Yeah. And therefore you would have been able to buy more product. You'd have more product to sell. Yep. You would have... A better margin for profit margin because you wouldn't be paying, paying higher prices, higher prices. Yeah. so you'd have better profit so therefore you'd have a higher cash flow turnover so then you'd be able to buy more and invest more quicker yeah. into the business they growing the business quicker yeah all right we do yeah. stop all of that <laughs> yes it does and so they'd like to claim otherwise but <laughs> they'd like to claim a lot of things wouldn't they but yeah it's 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 not fun it certainly adds another several layers of stress to an already stressful situation well i'm looking at the supplies you've got here you know the yep. little, little containers of glitter and, and this and that and yeah and it all yeah and, and you don't realize how much money is actually sitting on a shelf oh when you've there'd got, be a ridiculous amount of yeah, money. yeah because you've got yeah. all these supplies you know yeah. but i've probably um, got about 150 tumblers here at the moment and i'm paying Oh, it depends on the tumbler, really. But don't, well, no. yeah. yeah. So you, you've got to work out. Remember, yeah, so you've got to have some sale labor value, in there. Sale value. Sale value. There's quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm terrified that someone's going to break in here and just take the lot. Well, that's why we're not disclosing where you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So, somebody, um, Anthony, you'll have to watch the video from the beginning. Sorry, mate. Uh, we're having a, a conversation with Cassius. Debit card holder Karen from Bundaberg and what's life on the card and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share with you what she does. Um, she started a business called Obscene Me. Maybe you want to explain your products. Okay, thank you. Right. Um, so I have a little bit of a potty mouth. Just, just a, a bit. bit. <laughs> um, and my mum especially was always into me about my swearing and all of this sort of stuff. So I'm just like, well... Why not make a business out of it? So basically what I do, I started um, with uh, stubby coolers and vinyl prints. And then once I've managed to um, save up the funds to turn my printer into a sublimation printer, I decided I would start doing uh, insulated tumblers, coffee cups, uh, key rings, phone grips, the little pop socket type ones. And I am going to move on to earrings in the next couple of days, which is really exciting. And it's all sassy, sweary, rude, in your face. We don't give it. 
what you think um, attitude type stuff. Amanda's got a question here about the card, basically. What does freedom mean to you as a forced card holder? I don't have any. I don't have any freedom. I don't have a freedom of choice of where I purchase my products. I don't have a freedom of choice of where I purchase anything. Um, I, I, it has removed... It's removed all of my freedoms, really. I mean, I'm not confined to a house or anything like that, but I kind of am because of all the uh, psychological and mental health... Um, hold on, baby. Uh, ...effects it's had on me. It has turned me into a recluse. I don't go anywhere unless I absolutely have to. Um, if I go for coffee with the girls, it's at their house. And even that happens very rarely. Um, what freedom would mean to me um, would be getting off this card, having the ability to make my own financial decisions, to have my autonomy back, you know, like, and baby, please stop. <laughs> I know you're singing, but mummy's trying to concentrate because the words have stopped flowing so easily. <laughs> um, yeah, so well, what, darling, what? Um, yeah, go through the front door. Go tell David that Mummy said you can watch Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel? Yes. <laughs> Off you <Hang> go, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she would have just sat there singing the whole time and I would have been distracted. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so freedom to me would be off, being off this goddamn card, um, having my own place. I would be able to start being a part of society again. My kids would be able to um, participate in, you know, community events and stuff like that. Um, it would just, it would change the world for me to be off this card. Everything would become so much easier. I mean, I'm still going to have my, my BPD and PTSD and all that sort of shit, but it's, that's just like this much of the problem. Everything else piled on top is what makes it unmanageable and, and, and hard, you know, and, and the more I can knock off that mountain, the easier it's going to be for me. And the Indu card is like this much of it, like in the mountains, probably this big, <laughs> you know, um, it would just, yeah, it would really change the world for me and my kids to be off this stupid card. So, um... Rights or protections Yeah, issues. rights or protections issues since being on the card. Um, how do you mean? Okay, for instance, your consumer rights regarding if you do stuff up, what recourse have you got? Oh, okay, um... So, oh, there was a situation like that. What happened there? Um, Can you get compensation if they cost you money? No. Right? No, if they absolutely not. If, if you They've got a, well, what is it, an indemnity? They've got a letter of no action. A letter of no action, So yeah. you've been exempted from, um, excluded from the Consumer Law Act. Yeah. yeah um, so there's, so there's no therefore, protection. But have you felt that at all? Um, you know what I mean? Um, so consumer rights your abuse of your human rights oh just the way it, it, it dehumanizes and demoralizes people it's like it is i got torn a shred for saying this before but i stand by my statement and i will always stand by it the indu cashless debit card is nothing but government sanctioned financial abuse mm -hmm. and there's nothing else to it that's what it is um, and, and I don't care if, if people get cranky at that. Oh, you, you know, you, you're um, undermining actual um, finance, uh, domestic violence victims, blah, 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 whatever the freaking hell they say. Bullshit. I know exactly what it's like. I've been through it. I'm not undermining anything. I'm telling you exactly what the Indu card is, and it is government-sanctioned financial abuse. End of story. Um, and they're getting away with it. Which is ridiculous. And people, the only people I find that support the card are people who have no goddamn idea what they're actually on about and people that are stuck in a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, people not stuck dogma, in... not dogma. Stigma? No. Um, like they, they buy into all the hype. They believe the bloody uh, propaganda and all that shit. God, I can't believe I can't remember that word. Yeah, no, it's gone. It's not going to happen for me. I can't get in there and find it. So. <laughs> I know what you mean, though. Um, yeah, uh, we, we... Ideology. That's They're it. stuck in an ideology. Oh, yeah. my God, it came to me. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's... Oh, yes, thank you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay, trolls, 
yeah, and that, stuff that's like whole, that. That's, that's a caused a whole lot of problems. I had I had to walk away from anything cashless debit card related because um, you know like. I'm happy to do any interviews anybody wants done. You know, I'll do radio, I'll do podcasts, you know, you name it, I'm happy to do it. But there was a time there where I had to walk away. I think it was after uh, the Sydney Morning Herald was first, then the 7.30 report. Yeah, So it was first. Like after the first um, 7.30 report, but it was absolutely... I, I was uh, taking screenshots of all the really horrible things people oh, were saying. So it was, just, it was just taking up all of my space on my phone, and my phone's 128 gig. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and, and it got to the point where it was really damaging. The me. online bullying was absolutely yeah, horrendous. It was terrible. Like, they um, were saying things about my kids and, you know, like, they, they all assumed at the time I had four kids that I had four kids to four different fathers. Oh, they jump on learn, that all the time, Learn to yeah. shut your legs, you whore, and all this kind of crap. Like, and, like, I'm fairly thick-skinned. You know, I can brush most things off, but when it was coming at me, at the rate it was coming at me, over something that I it's really important to me, and, and then, then when they started to attack my kids, like they were picking on Amber's weight, she was a seven year old kid with a little bit of baby. Oh, fat, yeah, and they were and picking like, on the kid's yeah, smile and this yeah, and that. Yeah, how my kids looked and all this kind of crap. And I'm like, come at me, leave my kids alone, you know, like. <laughs> No, they can't do that. Yeah, um, so, you know, that was hard, and I and I had to walk away. And then I remember when Peter McCutcheon rang me and said we want to do a follow up, and I thought, oh God, <laughs> I've got to ring Karen. <laughs> and I knew that you were in a, a good place from the last time. Yeah. And then when you said yes, you, you had to think about it. Then yeah, you I said did. yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, we come and did it again. It was another three and a half hours of filming. And everything got chopped. Yeah. But at least the second one, we didn't have to put up with Faye, the Faye Whiffin yeah, show. Faye Whiffin show. Oh, my God. And then that one, the, the, the version on YouTube, they even cut me out like completely. Oh, on really? That, yeah, on that first version, oh. when they put it on YouTube, they've edited me out completely. And ironically, on the second one, they've left in the part where I made it very clear for people escaping domestic violence. Yeah. All that's happening is... They've broken free. You finally got your time. You get a sniff it of took, freedom. A it sniff. took me three years to get my financial autonomy back after I split from my ex. Yeah. But it took me a decade minimum to get some part of me back after the mental abuse. Yeah. Right? Probably took me a good decade, even longer, before I actually got me back. Yeah. And to me, this cash just debit card is a threat to all of that. From, you know, because they would come in and take my autonomy, my financial yeah. autonomy away, me away again. You just, Everything you're, you're, under, I, you're under the thumb, yeah. you're controlled, your spirit is squashed. Yeah, and this is to it. non-existent levels, and you know, uh, and I couldn't handle like. Yeah, I've been on the other end of the gaslighting from a different level, um, from from politicians, <laughs> you know what I mean, and stuff like that, but. If I had to deal with staff of Services Australia and Indu staff, I'd be a wreck. I, I would just be a wreck. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just, I, every time I get teary, I sniffle. Uh, I <laughs> sniffle without it, so. Um, yeah, yeah, so. I'm just, I'm just lucky I'm stubborn as shit and I'm like, there's, I've come close. I've come really close a I few think times. You're a younger version of me, right? Um, I was the same as you. Everybody's biggest comment I used to get throughout my life when I was younger Geez, you're tenacious. You're like a bull in a china shop. You just don't let go, do you? Was the biggest comment I used to get in my 30s and 40s was, geez, you don't let go of something when you're on it. It's like, no, I'm not. And I won't let go on this either because to me, I can feel the pain of people having that autonomy ripped away. And it's like, no, you're literally taking the guts out of somebody. And it's not fair, you know what I mean? Keith Pitt, eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but he can. Like, yeah, he's destroyed. Every time, every time, because um, my youngest daughter's dad, yes, I do have two baby daddies, but mm, um, my youngest daughter's dad, uh, he works on the trawlers in Harvey Bay. So um, he comes and helps out when he's on land. So as you're driving from Bundaberg to Maribara or back again, there's these big Keith Pitt signs. Oh, We've made a ritual in my family, every time we go past those billboards, we all go, wave to Keith Pitts. 
And we oh, do. I don't blame you because yep. they, my kids hate him. They absolutely hate him. You know, we went and stood out front side of his bloody shop front in Bundaberg here. You know, they hate him. They absolutely hate him. And my, Amber actually calls him Keith shit. Mm. Yeah, I'll say, I yep. remember that. Yep. Um, I found um, because I, I I took Keith on at the last federal election. He had meet in the park yep. in Harvey Bay. Um, I didn't realise how tall he was. God, he's a big man. He's, yeah, seven, he's, not, over, he's not small. He's over seven. Oh, I'd say he's a good seven foot plus. You know what I mean? He's, he's a big man. Yeah. And I'm only five foot two. <laughs> and I found myself, I tore him to pieces. How? Yeah, and I, I just said to him, how dare you denigrate your whole region? How dare you do this and have so much disrespect for people that are struggling in your community? You know, oh, the rumour around then, town is his wife's got a gambling problem. I don't know. I don't live up here, but the thing is, mm. I mean, there's obviously personal reasons why he's so hooked into this. Do you know what I mean? Um, he, he didn't like it the day that um, uh, uh, Jody. Were you there that day at the park near the pool? I don't know. I know Jody, no, Jody I was there. there was Peter you. was there. No, I, was I there. couldn't get up there. I yeah. did the one in Harvey. I did yeah. the one in Harvey Bay. So he, did, he, did, he didn't like me that day. Because here's me, like, I made sure I dressed in my best office worker attire, um, <laughs> Sunday best sort of thing. Um, no, it was just like a nice blouse and a, and a skirt or something like that. And I had three of my kids with me. And he's there for this meet and greet, you know, let's, oh, let's go meet the constituents and rah, rah, rah. He picked the no cashless card crew straight away. Um, I hadn't actually met any of them at this stage. This was the first time I met them. Um, so I was sort of just hanging off by myself with my kids. And, you know, Peter ripped it into him, Jody ripped it into him. And then he's like, oh, yes, well, um, is there anybody else that would like to say something? And I'm, like, working up the courage to actually speak. So I've just walked up to him. I've stood, like, this far away from him. I've pushed my sleeves up and I've gone, do I look like a junkie to you? And he's looked at me like, oh, oh, what, what do you mean? I said, do I look like a junkie to you? Oh, I can't place a comment on that. I said, why not? You've lumped everyone else in this town as a junkie. Why can't you comment whether I look like one or not? So I ripped it into him. I'm just like, why? What, what benefit has this car got? He didn't want to stay very long after that. No, he, no, he, he just kept deflecting the questions. His little TA or whatever she was was like writing down. Darling. I'm <laughs> I, just um, like, yeah, take my name. Do you want my number plate too? And we literally chased him out of the... Well, not chased him, but he was trying to get away. And we're just following him, throwing shit at him. You know, like questions, words, not actual shit. Yeah. <laughs> he got upset in that. And he just because... took off so fast, speeding, mind you. Yeah. He thought that we were trying to video him in Harvey Bay and he got all upset. Yeah. And he said, no video footage allowed under the communications law. And there's no such law in a public park. Mm. But anyway, he just tried to intimidate um, Jack... Um, James and tried not to let him video and um, so the result was um, when I tore into him he, he deflected again oh well it's uh, federal government policy oh. it's nothing to do with me and I just turned around and said Keith you came out the paper and said this was your baby mm. I said so you are responsible for the impact it's having on your constituents right because whether you like it or not you're supposed to represent all 146,000 people not just in the, the upper electorate, echelons. not just the 20% of the top business yeah. owners in the town. You know what I mean? And, and his, um, his favourite line is, if you have any problems with Inju, visit the Inju shop front. Yes. And they're about as useful as tits on a bull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, see, this is the difference between if you get on to a Labor federal senator or MP or even a Greens, right? At least they will help you. Right, mm. um, and they will go. They will liaise um, for you through Services Australia. But if you go into Keith Pitt's office, oh, go to Centrelink or ring the hotline. Yeah, they yep. will not liaise or assist a cardholder they don't, they don't in any way. Want to hear it. So um, I haven't heard any complaints in my office. He says <laughs> because he turns everyone away. <laughs> he locks everybody out. Like, you can't hear things if you're like no 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 not uh. this name not this name. <laughs> Yeah, and you, you know, and you don't have meetings with people, so yeah. of course you don't want it. You it's convenient that these six 
supporters of the cashless debit card mm. only hear what they want to hear. Yep. And everybody else, including the Adelaide University, I've emailed all of them. Right. I've emailed all of them and told them exactly what it's bloody like. And, they and just... none of them have even so much as responded. I think uh, one Labor senator was the only one that responded. Um, and even then it was like a, because that was back before they were anti-card. So they're like, yeah, that was very good. But you'll get a different story now from Labor. Will do completely. Yeah. Um, so I know, let's. I know Tom Smith in towns. He's been fighting. Oh, since but he, the start. He's, he was with me protesting on the on the road on Boat Harbour Drive at the beginning. Um, so Tom would come out with the and and then Labor because he was with the Labor State Branch down there. So they would come out every time we had a protest. Yep. Um, and the public meetings and everything. They they came out for everything. You know, in the first. Um, Community reference. Karen group, my ass. <laughs> the, the vested interests group. I think you mean Amanda. Hang on, so <laughs> have they helped you at all? Hell no, no. They so haven't. Would you, would you know who they all are here? <clears throat> Wouldn't have a clue. Would not have a clue. So they've not made themselves publicly no, available no, to get help. No, any, anybody who's been put on the cashless debit card, all they're told about is the shop front and the hotline number. That's it. That's it. There's no wraparound services. There's no community services. There's nothing, you know. Or oh, unless you go to Impact. Yeah, well, Impact is just another ward in itself. Well, it's a job agency now getting paid three times for being a job agency. Yeah. Because they got yeah. the job and agency they don't money. Even, they don't even look for people. Like my ex used to do some work for the job agency for Impact, and it's a total rot. But anyway, that's another story. So, all right. Well, let's have a look at your stuff. All right, I reckon we should. You okay? Um, public service announcement. If you do not like sweary or rude things, probably turn away. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, we'll grab this. If you had the freedom. Yeah. You, um, How do we flip the camera? Hang on. Oh, um, yeah, that, that one. one. That one. Okay, so. Okie dokie. So some of them, are, I have three categories on my website. There's the, well, aren't you sweet, which is the completely non-sweary stuff. I have the repent ye sinners, which is a little bit spicier. And then I have the going to hell in a handbasket, which is all of the ones that are, these two here were custom, custom pieces. So going to hell in a handbasket is all this kind of stuff. So, so what are these? Okay, so they're double insulated, uh, double insulated tumblers. They're uh, travel cups. Uh, slide it back that way. Oh, cool. Yep, travel cups, um, hot or cold for up to twelve hours. There's three different types. There's the uh, just I call them the plain ones because they're just a gloss finish. Then we've got these ones here with a matte finish. They glow in the dark. And then we've got these ones here have like a bit of a shimmer to them. They change colour in the sunlight and they glow in the dark. So I also do coffee cups. Um, this is just the stuff I have on display for when I'm doing my socials and stuff like that. And then I also have whoops, uh, pop sockets, uh, phone grips, I should say, and key rings at the moment. And I'm working on developing um, some designs for earrings. So, yeah, that's, that's what I do. I also do some resin... Um, Reds and stuff. I do goddesses and ashtrays. Um, what have we got here? And some skull type stuff. All the sun just cannot see at all. So little goddesses. I like doing those ones. But yeah, so um, I have my own website. Um, it's obsceneme.com. I'm on Facebook, uh, TikTok. And Instagram, all three of which are obsceneme.australia. Um, so it's nice and easy to find me. Okay. Yes. And I'm I like 100 and, or 200 followers off being able to go live on TikTok. So Yeah, we're going to work on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to work on that one. But yeah, where? so that's, that's what I do. And I'll just, it's a little bit of a mess at the moment, but I'll give you a tour. So... I have two different printers. That's my regular printer. That's my sublimation printer. This is where I do some of my work. Most of it's done in bed because it's the only room with aircon. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got all like my little photos set up here, all my packing boxes, spare merchandise, plus stuff that's been made. That's just a nightmare over there at the moment. But 
you know, all my bubble wrap, all my uh, straws and stuff, packing supplies, all of that. That's all my resin stuff. And then this is where I do a lot of my prep work, all my cutting and wrapping. And then over here on the other bench is my sublimation oven, my mug press and my just normal heat press. But yeah, so all of that is in a tiny little garage <laughs> and it's really hot. Okay, so you we, right, we'll flip this around. So Karen's been doing our mugs for us, right? So if you want to order a mug, you can do so today. It'd be a good idea. Um, I mean, I've got orders for some, but she's got she's done some extras. Yep. Right. So if you want to order one, just message the page. Do it now, um, and I'll have a look at them after the live, and that way I can work out who's going where and what, and if we need to make any more before I leave here today. Yep. Because there's 120 kilometres between us and where we live, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll make sure people get what they need and what they want. Um, and while I've got you here, what I'll do, because I bought a t-shirt up for Karen. Yep. Right, so I may as well plug our shirts as well. Don't forget it. Oh, if you'd like one of our shirts. Okay. Hold on, um, go that way. because the way. light. The light. If you'd like one of there our shirts. There we go. Okay, so we've got our shirts. Uh, badges, stickers, coffee mugs. Just drop me a line, and uh, of course, if you ever want to chip chip in, just drop me a message for the account details, because it all helps keep us going, and me running around where I've got to go. And oh, hello, Shanice. Sorry, I just realised you were there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So these are fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I wish I was creative. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just not. I'm just boring. It's I'm easy boring. as like that if. I think the only thing that keeps people away from sublimation is that there is a big upfront cost. Otherwise, I think everyone would be doing it because it is so easy. Well, it's the upfront cost. Yeah, yeah. And, if, and the creativity for the designs and well, stuff this like is that. It. I mean, yeah. I'm hopeless. I'm just a bit mental <laughs> blank and that's it. Mind you, yeah, after what happened last week, there's going to be more mental blanks, I think. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, it's hot, no? Absolutely. It is really hot in here. So, spare a thought. She doesn't have any air conditioning. No, not even a fan. We we had to drag this one out from the kids' room, but it's really noisy, so we had to have it turned off yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. <sighs> well, thank you very much for doing this interview for us. Ah, not a problem. Um, it was a good chance for you to be able to share your story without it being edited by anybody, Yeah. which is the main thing. And it gives people an insight into how life on the card is for somebody. Um, I mean, there's other people out there that are struggling to... Uh, trying to get a business off the ground, I can't get a business off the ground. There's other yeah. sort of lost businesses. Um, there's people out there that are homeless. You're homeless. Oh, we, I, you I say I'm you, technically. Yeah, we still you still can't you get your own place. No. And Indu is a barrier to that happening. Yep. And with the housing crisis, it's just compounded it. Yeah. And yeah. like I can't stay here forever. I'm like ten, no. tensions are high. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, because, as you they know, would you're be. You're an adult. You're a parent. I've got you're five supposed, children. You're supposed to have yeah. your own house with your children yeah. in them. You know what I mean? not trying to live in one bedroom in your mum's house type thing. Um, you're not a teenager anymore. <laughs> no, no. You know, so... Okay, so you want to flip that back to me and I'll... Oh, it's on you now. Oh, it's on I'm you now. Yeah, I'm recording right. you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay. So I'll wrap this up. I just wanted to say a couple of things. Yeah, for sure. If you want to order a mug, please do. All right, if you want to chip in, please do. It helps um, with running costs and stuff like that. Um, now, it's winding down to Christmas, um, I will still be online, but I have to take it easy. Um, for people who don't know here, last week I had a suspected stroke, so I'm now entering the, we've got to go and get an MRI and find out what happened, um, so I have to slow down. But I want to say thank you to Karen for today. I want to say thank you to all of our supporters out there. I want to say thank you to Amanda, right, SN7 Resources. I want to say thank you to all of my admin team as well because there's a lot of people behind the scenes, right. Um, we will slow down over Christmas. We'll, we'll, the page will still have stuff posted rel that's relevant, but we have to slow down until hopefully next year we get to vote 
the Morrison government out and One Nation out and we need to get rid of all of these right-wing ideologies um, out of our parliamentary system, hopefully. So uh, the only way we're going to get rid of this card is to vote Labor. And we need like them or love them, if you want to get rid of the card, you have to vote, vote Labor. Labor. That's the way it is. Now, I'm apolitical. I don't belong to a, a political party. Um, but the way that it will go for me is, of course, Labor 1, because I want to see the end of this card, and I want Australian human rights and legal protections um, restored, as they rightfully should be. I want people to be allowed back into our community again and have their lives back. You know what I mean? And, they, and their kids to not be saddled with this as start, well. Start getting back some of that pride that they stripped from you. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it's got to go. And there's a lot more as well that I feel we need to protect our Medicare, we need to protect our aged care, NDIS, everything that's a, a human policy. Housing. Housing. Critical housing. Addiction needs to right. become a health issue, not a legal issue. Yeah. So for us, it's like get ALP in, Australian progressives and the Greens in the Senate, right? Get rid of Pauline Hanson, right? And the wannabes, don't even look at UAP, Clive Palmer, Craig Kelly, you know, Gap and all them. They're all, uh, they call us sheep. I call them lambs to the slaughter because all they're doing is taking your vote to give it to the LNP, yep. right? To keep Morrison and co in power so they can keep rotting this country yeah they're just taking and just votes destroying from people and enough's enough so to get rid of the card we have to vote labor irrespective of what your political preference is this time round it's about protecting what's left of the lucky country which is protecting our social security from the privatization like Indu, protecting our medicare from the americanization of the insurance industry like Greg Hunt wants to do, bring the US system here. Protect NDIS and our disabled people, protect our aged pensioners, and try and restore some sort of public housing. Yes. Right? And better services for domestic violence survivors and so many more. Oh, men mental health mental is massive. Mental health. Um, you know, on all. all um yeah, because they've, All they've taken it, males' mental health, women's mental health, children's mental health. It's just mental health as a whole needs a complete overhaul. And they've just cut so many services because... Yes, oh, absolutely, uh, Marie or Mari, sorry, I'm not sure. Um, I agree with you. All the wasted money would have been so much better off put into uh, rehab and mental health facilities, mm -hmm. absolutely. And housing. Yeah, oh, yep, housing. and housing, yeah. Look, the key, Finland got rid of homeless people by giving them housing. Mm. Simple as that. That is it. Give everybody housing, stable, long-term, affordable housing. Then those that needed additional supports, they bought those supports to them, right? If they needed supports with addiction, they bought those service to them. If persons wanted help with employment, they bought that service to them, right? But they had long, they got them off the streets into long-term, affordable housing. You give people a foundation and stability, and that helps them rebuild oh, their it, lives. Oh, it's a whole new world. And the cashless debit card, the punitive low rates of social security, right, even if you are working, low wages in this country, all they're doing is driving people onto the streets. And there's no hope, no stability, no foundation for the family unit. And what do people do when that sort of thing happens? Well, a lot of people turn to drugs well, not as a lot, coping mechanism. Some people do. Well, you'll find, you'll find that most addicts... Most people don't start they, off. They, They're not like, oh, I'm going to do this because I want to do this. They start doing it because they've got something going on in their life. Which yeah, is... but I mean, to me, at the moment, we're seeing far more homeless families than yes. we are. We're moving away from that stereotype of the addicts being the homeless people. Uh, I can appreciate where there's been situations where people become homeless and then over time they start using to self-medicate yes. Yes. because of that, that's depression, what I was, That's what I was saying, though. It's all the stuff that happens yeah. before they start using that causes them yeah. to use, not well, you just... you see, they're, yeah. they're at risk, they're in danger, they're on the streets, they're yep. exposed to other addicts. They're and it's a coping mechanism. They're exposed to other people that are not the safest people, right? And then you've got your anxiety, depression... PTSD, uh, the whole lot, I can understand that. Uh, Robin, the, uh, Labor has come out publicly and said that they will do that. Yeah. Um, they will definitely scrap the card. That is their policy. Yep. 
um, scrapped the card, cancelled the Indu contract and repealed the legislation. You can't ask for more. <laughs> but they have to be in government to do it. Yep. Okay. It's not, everybody screams, why didn't Labor do this? They're in opposition. They're not the government. They need to be the government to do things. And that's the bottom line. Oh, my eyeballs are sweating. Anyway, guys, I think we're going to have to work because I'm melting. Yeah, like I'm, a I'm melting here. and my bladder is about to explode. <laughs> and we still have packages to, to parcel. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want one of the mugs, send a message now to the page. They're $25, but that does include postage. Okay, so you don't have to pay any more for postage. That's included in the price. Um, if you don't want to buy a mug but you want to chip in, just send a message to the page. Uh, the bank details are actually on the other post in the comments uh, for the mugs just down the page. But either way, just send a message to the page with the details if you want something. Shirts are $25 again posted. Badges are $5. Yes. And somebody said to me, somebody said to me, why are badges $5? I said, because Australia Post charges me $2.30 to post them. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, that's like $2.30 to post one batch. Yes, Ron Williams, absolutely. I will be wearing my Hawaiian shirt. I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, on, on December the 16th, abscondment day. <laughs> yep, Scondment and day. when I vote too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, okay, guys, so I need a cold drink. Need yeah, it, it's sweltering in here, it really is. I think, oh, I don't know what you're coming oh, to. Let's flip that around okay there so we go. we're gonna say see you later um and uh yeah <laughs> oh I'm, i've run out of words now too <laughs> yeah, oh, my, my brain's fried this heat is not helping yeah it's just so, so hot yeah so thanks guys and uh we'll uh i'll do another live another time but thank you karen no worries and uh i didn't think we were going to do it for so long but no yeah. not <laughs> I'm not checking